be talking to the fastest human calculator. I have with me Neil Kanta Bhanu Prakash, 20 year old St. Stephen's College student but belonging to Hyderabad. Thank you so much for joining us, Bhanu. I must Hello, uh, confess to you that I'm more nervous talking to you than perhaps any politician or anyone else because <laughs> this whole nervousness about <laughs> mathematics, as we say. Tell us yeah. about your latest achievement. What did you manage to achieve because of which we're calling you uh, an Olympic gold winner in many senses? Sure. So, um, mental calculation, as you know, I think has been recently popularized again by the Bollywood movie Shakuntala Devi. So, mental calculation is to do calculations in your head quicker than the speed of a calculator and sometimes racing past other human beings who are in the same sector. So, I've been active in mental calculations for a long time. I'm 20 years old and I hold four world records and 50 Olympic records for being the fastest human calculator. But very recently, on the August 15th, a couple of weeks ago on our Independence Day, I represented India in the Mind Sports Olympics. Yeah, as fancy as it sounds, is as big as the physical Olympics, which India goes and wins golds in badminton and uh, the other sports. So in the Mind Sports Olympics, there is no Indian or an Asian who ever won a gold in the Mental Calculation World Championship. So I would say that this is a pride for the entire nation and also a good reminder that there is a lot more to do in mathematical uh, understanding and promoting uh, mental calculation as a sport in the country. But yeah, I'm really proud that a mental calculation gold medal is back home. And for the first time in the last 23 years, and the first time a Indian ever won it. And that's the reason why people are calling me the fastest human calculator in the world. Banu, uh, you know, uh, you know, traditionally India is associated with maths and having given the zero and so on. But many people consider themselves a zero in mathematics and some studies seem to indicate that three out of four students actually are paranoid of maths. Um, yes. Yeah, I was supposed to be good at maths as a child, but subsequently somewhere I slipped along the line. But yes. would you give us the satisfaction of thinking that you are a born genius and therefore you have it? Or did it all come through hard work and it's something that can be achieved? Okay, I'm actually going to not give you the happiness by saying that I'm a born genius. Reason being that I am not. I don't personally believe in the idea that um, that uh, anyone's born genius and everyone has the numerical competence, which we see. And at the end of the day, the, it's, it's never a blame on an individual. The systems, the policy, the education and the curriculum sort of determines how you take your first understanding towards what math is, right? I mean, if math is a water body or a swimming pool or an ocean for that matter, the first wave hits you hits you and scares you. But once you go into it is when it's peaceful. It's peaceful enough that people can actually go. And that can happen only when, when things are taught the right way. So, I mean, I trained myself for 15 years. I started off as a kid who, uh, who uh, was troubled in a certain ways and just went on to uh, break world records in the days to come by progressing step by step in this. And as arithmetic and literacy are the two fundamental pillars of what in what, let's say, education is, focusing on numeracy made me understand that this is as close to our brain and how we function, how we look at the world as literacy and language is. It's as important. And no one's scared of language. How many of us are scared of our mother tongue? We're not. But we're scared of what math is. And that's something which I am and with my startup, Exploring Infinities, want to change. You know, some people would argue, you yourself have uh, quoted this, saying that, you know, Usain Bolt, his speed can be matched by any vehicle. Similarly, your uh, speed and calculation can be matched by any calculator. Explain to our viewers why this ability is still important, even though we may have machines that can do it as fast as you, at least, if not uh, faster, but at least as fast as you. No, absolutely. Something which I want to break the ice. When we say that I'm the fastest human calculator, it means that I can beat a computer and a calculator which a human uses. A calculator by its own or a computer is way quicker than a human being. Just like how an aeroplane is way quicker than Usain Bolt can ever be. So this still proves a point. I mean, a lot of people ask me saying, Bhano, you have this world record, sure, but how does this contribute? The contribution is not mathematical. The contribution is towards brain, the brain abilities, just like how Usain Bolt as an individual who probably has run for 9.8 seconds to finish the 100 meters, which can probably be run by a Tesla car in three seconds, has proven and inspired an entire generation into physical fitness. Just like how this particular feat, which I do, celebrates mathematical skill, celebrates the skill of understanding how our brain function and functions and has the infinite capabilities, which we don't usually talk about. I present it in my Instagram and my Twitter handle every now and then, projecting that, hey, look, 
this is what a human brain is capable of doing. If you don't know how, I'm going to teach you. Wherever you are from in the world, I'm going to teach you how to do this. And I'm going to make you not, not love math anymore. And you're going to be best friends with it. Okay. Uh, you, you know, uh, I'm going to give you some tests. Sometimes, you know, you want uh, answers leaked. In this case, I would have thought I should almost ask you the questions because I can't even comprehend the level of mathematics that you are at. But I'm going to yeah. take you on on this. Cube root of 9183330048. Uh, that should be 972. Should be 972, yes. Okay, I'm not even going to bother to uh, calculate, but our viewers, if they are going to go back and do that, they are going to get that on. One I mean, more. just for people uh, to remember, it's 9... Oh, Ma'am, I couldn't get you. Can you repeat? Yeah. 789 into 234, let's say. Okay, that would be 184,626. Okay, uh, simple additions uh, perhaps are not going to really matter, but I'm also going to ask you, what do you want to tell children who are paranoid of maths? Many of us realize that, you, uh, like you mentioned, if you have the right teachers and the right motivation, uh, you start loving mathematics. And at the same time, the teacher changes and people say, oh my God, my teacher changed and I started hating maths. What do you want to tell children uh, who want to make a career in maths also and want to love the subject because you do realize that uh, if you know maths, you feel smart. Sure. So um, as I mentioned, right, math is not one of an optional skill in life. To a certain capacity or the other, it's something which is intrinsic and something we need. Quantities and understanding how they go about it forms the societal construct which we, which we live in. And regardless of where we are in the world, be it India, be it the US, be it the UK, the fear of math is omnipresent. And this can be changed only when math is made fun. I think that's the only way out. Reason being, people are capable. It's just that people give up on it a little too early because we don't give up on language. Because why? We need it. Two, there are creative methods, dramatics. There is, there is poetry. There is conversation. There is a lot of things which can actually get you closer to language than they can get you to math. So Exploring Infinity is which, the company which I head has been aspiring to build games. In fact, we've been piloting this across... Uh, more than 60 government schools and 10,000 kids to make them play games which will eventually, arithmetic games alone, which will eventually lead them into starting to love math because competition, I mean, at the end of the day, how many of us exercise when we told, when we're told that we should exercise, but everyone plays sports. So that is what it is. Mind sports, promoting them and promoting mathematical education through it is what I would want to say is a way ahead. And I think I would never blame the students on this because, I mean, having interacted to so many people, it's always, always how the government, the, 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 school, the schools, the teachers, and how these people function. So what I, what I suggest is, is that the government comes up and acknowledges this gold medal and says that this is a time when we realize that India is on the global map. We need 30 to 40 more golds coming from the government schools in the country, and we'll set an academy to do that. Yeah. And I mean, I'd be more than happy to sort of uh, ambassador it and take it ahead. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. It was such fun talking to you, Bhanu. And uh, I do hope those math labs are set up across the country. And all of us, the, uh, you know, uh, irrespective um, of age, get the benefit of uh, enjoying mathematics, really. So, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us.